to Family Forum. I'm Lisa Carney. I'm a social worker with the Town of Groton, Department of Human Services. Um, today we are doing a program on food resources and we have three guests. Our guests are Deb Burke from the Town of Groton, who's a social worker, Jennifer Blanco, who works for the United Way of Southeastern Connecticut, and Jennifer Galloway, who's a SNAP outreach worker. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, we're going to talk to you, Deb, and get a sense of the food locker in Groton. What's that all about? Well, believe it or not, um, there are a lot of people who don't have enough money for food, um, don't have enough money for basic necessities. Um, so anybody in the eligibility requirements are really pretty lax. Uh, the only requirement is that somebody has to be a town resident, live in the town of Groton, um, make an appointment with a social worker and come on in and um, we give about a week's worth of food. Um, and then usually I like to add on to that, you know, there are bags that are already prepared um, by volunteers and then I like to add on some little extras and whatnot. So we have um, primarily um, non-perishable goods, canned goods, pasta, rice, cereal, that type of thing. Okay. Can, um, can you deal with someone who maybe has a food allergy or a special medical condition? We can, but not, not a whole lot. We, we depend on um, donations. Okay. So people don't usually donate um, special needs food. Um, sometimes we get salt-free things and whatnot, but okay. when people have a, have diabetes or whatever, it's a little tricky. Okay, where does the food come from for the, from the food locker? The food is primarily donated um, by the town of Groton is extremely generous. Um, different organizations, civic groups, churches, individuals come by and um, drop off food on a daily basis. And then we have a volunteer who sorts all that food, makes sure the expiration dates are right. And uh, it's, it's a really, it's a wonderful thing. It's located right on 2 Fort Hill Road, right around the corner from the library here. And um, it's, it's really quite an incredible resource. That sounds great, it sounds wonderful. Um, can people get non-food items at the food locker? We do have what we call personal items. So we have, um, shampoo and deodorant and soap and toothbrushes and that type of thing. Some cleaning supplies. Okay. Um, because those are things that food stamps don't generally cover. And so we do have a toilet paper. That's a, I mean, okay. it sounds odd, but a lot of people will request toilet paper. Um, we have some paper towels and whatnot, but primarily the, the necessities. And how about pets? Do you have any resources for pets, pets in the family? Yes. Um, we do have a, a what we call a pet food locker, and um, that again is uh, funded. I mean, not funded, but uh, supplied by uh, donations. And we have a lot of food for dogs, for cats, um, primarily dogs and cats. I would say we have wet food, dry food, and whatnot. But oftentimes, people do, who do have pets, I mean, we forget about the pets, you know, right. and, and they need to eat as well. So Absolutely. we do have a lot of uh, pet okay. food. How long has the food locker been in existence in Groton? It's been around a long time. It's been around since early 80s. Um, it's funded primarily, it's, it's uh, the fiduciary for the food locker is the Mystic Congregational Church, mm -hmm. and they have stepped in. They, they um, coordinate all the, because sometimes we do get uh, funded uh, money mm -hmm. donated and uh, so that goes into a special account that the Mr. Congregational Church is in, in charge of. Um, we have a holiday food distribution and people donate to that, donate money and, and goodies to okay. that. Um, we um, give out vouchers for turkeys and turkeys themselves and hold dinners for uh, okay. Thanksgiving and for Christmas, so it's really nice, about 500 What people. are some of the other food resources within the town, within, that age, within the agency that uh, people can access? Within? Um, Groton Social Services. Well, um, I have to look at my little notes here now. <laughs> uh, we do get um, 
bread and pastries delivered on uh, Tuesdays and on Fridays. Okay. And that's Panera Bread uh, donates and BJ's donates. Okay. And so we do get quite a, uh, quite a bit of bread and pastries that people are allowed to come in and take, you know, a couple of each or whatever, one of each. Um, the um, Meals on Wheels is another thing in town here mm -hmm. that you can access. That's, that's for the elderly population primarily, people over, well I say elderly, that's <laughs> within whatever, um, <laughs> people over 60 um, who are housebound and not able to get out and whatnot. They can call the Senior Center okay. um, or TVCCA directly. That's, a, that's a, um, a really wonderful program. It also gives that um, people can especially if you're housebound you have somebody come to the house once a day or you know to drop off something so and they can kind of check on the person exactly make sure, sure that they're okay mm -hmm. um what else do we have we have uh, the WIC program which is women infants and children uh that's a nutrition program and that meets here at um at Groton social services every other thursday i believe they have appointments there and that's a really great program. That's for, as the name implies, uh, women and their young children. Um, the holiday food distribution, I, I kind of touched on that a little bit. That we start in late October, I believe, and we um, give out food for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And uh, so that's really a nice, a nice program. Again, that's income-based, and a lot of the programs okay. that we have at Groton Social Services are income-based. The food locker, we're a little looser just because people run into tough times, and if you right. say you need food, we believe that you need food. Um, and then we do have the farmer's market in, in um, July, I believe. They give us uh, vouchers to give out to the seniors. Again, they're, they're um, eligibility requirements there. Okay. But. Um, I'm aware there's a program, a meals program um, within the town called Community Meals. What's that yeah, about? Yeah, that is a relatively newish program. Um, that's Monday evenings. It's a soup kitchen, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, it, they provide a really wonderful meal on Mondays. Um, people donate their time and you have um, very good and nutritionally um, complete meals. There's also a food kitchen type of thing, I mean a soup kitchen type of thing um, on Thursday evenings at a church, another church, it's the Community of Prayer and Praise, okay. and that's on Pleasant Valley Road, I believe. The Community Meals meets, um, currently it meets at Faith Lutheran Church, and then they have another site over at St. John's Church one, one uh, Monday of month. Now that is going to be changing and they're going to be moving over to the Senior Center. Oh, that's wonderful. Which is really nice. Yeah, I think it'll be easier for people on the bus route and whatnot to get to the... So that's, that's a great... Um, you know, it, it provides an opportunity to have a good meal and also the fellowship of um, right. other people and it's now, nice. Can anyone go to the community yeah, meals? Yep, anybody can go to those and it's, okay, it's really wonderful. awesome. All right, thank you, Deb. You're welcome. Um, Jennifer, welcome again. Thank you. And um, I'd like it if you could tell us a little bit about the mobile food pantry. So our mobile food pantry program, and we actually do have one here, um, we have two in uh, the Groton area, um, is a free market, farmer's market uh, style distribution mobile pantry, exactly as it sounds. <laughs> uh, it's a pantry on wheels, that's okay. what we like to call it. Our focus with that is um, to distribute uh, healthy foods to the community, so um, we have a high proportion of fresh fruits and vegetables on, on the truck. Uh, some gluten-free, salt-free, sugar-free items are also on the truck, so mm. any dietary restricted uh, items we have it available on there um, as well as some frozen proteins and bread um, so our main focus with that is to go to uh, some of the food deserts in our area and do distribution um, there are no income requirements for that uh, so uh, 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 since our goal is to increase access to healthy foods now is that only for the people that live in town that can go to this when it's in Groton not necessarily we don't okay. have any town restrictions on the uh, mobile food pantry program as we understand that there may be some clients that are from out of town working in in uh, the town and this allows us one quick stop for anybody that may need it okay mm -hmm. um, so it's 
different than the food locker in that it's not non-perishable, correct? It is. That is correct. So people so are we, getting some fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. That is okay. correct. Uh, we Wonderful. do do a lot of fresh, healthy apples, greens, uh, cabbage, carrots, potatoes. Um, so those are um, available on the truck. And it is about a week's worth of food mm -hmm. that you do receive it through there. Mm -hmm. It comes to our office on the uh, second Wednesday of the month from 10 to 11 and it really is a great it's a great thing you have people coming from all over and, it, and um, you know people have to wait in line but they're chit-chatting with one another mm -hmm. and and it's a it's a very very nice event it's it's um, a lot of work goes into it we have volunteers that uh, volunteer their time to um, to give the food out to people but it really it's it's great it really is it's a lot of uh, a lot of fun for us and it gets food out to the community. Thank now, you. Do you have to be receiving SNAP benefits to take advantage of the mobile food pantry? You automatically qualify if you're already receiving SNAP benefits. Okay. So this is another great opportunity to get fresh healthy produce um, and healthy foods right to your table. This is another. Okay. Mm -hmm. The people that come to the mobile food pantry, do they need to bring anything with them? Yes, the only thing that we ask for is for uh, uh, some form of ID, so anything with your name and address for it. Okay. Uh, there's no need for paychecks, there's no need for social security cards or anything like that. Okay. Uh, that's all we ask for. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with any other resources in the area that people can can utilize? Certainly, we actually um, we are familiar with Groton Community Meals. They are a member agencies of the of the food center, so we act as a supplement to the items that they receive. Okay. Um, uh, we also do have another pantry in the area. Um, it uh, I'm going to refer to my little list here. Um, it is located here in Groton, and um, uh, we have a, a small pantry at the Riverfront's Children's Center that is available to families that um, attend the program there. Um, but we also do have our, our MT, MTC UAW food locker um, that is also located on 18 Pleasant Street um, that is available as another resource and it's Thursdays from 9.30 to 11.30. It is open to anybody in, um, in the Groton area. Okay. Um, How can people find out about these services, any of them? So we actually do have a list available on our United Way website of okay. all of the pantries in all of New London County. So if you are a Groton resident and you happen to be in Norwich, for example, and it's the only time that you have, may have access to, you know, pick up any source of food, there is a list of agencies in Norwich that will okay. uh, accept, it's open to everyone. So this list is available on our United Way website at uwsect.org um, under Food uh, Center you'll be able to find the listing. We also do partner uh, with 211. So um, 211 is our central hotline um, that be has a whole listing of all the mobile food pantry programs, as well as all of the local food pantry shelters, soup okay. kitchens in the area. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. The listing that we um, that's on your website, we have a hard copy in the office, so okay. we have a lot of things that people can pick up, and one of them is food resources in the area. It really is helpful. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, our final guest, Jen Galloway. Welcome. Thank you. Um, you are a SNAP outreach worker. What is SNAP? SNAP is Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps, okay. but it's now called SNAP. So usually I assist people who are at various locations apply for SNAP benefits. Okay. I come to Groton once a week, usually because sometimes Groton residents can't get to Department of Social Services, so I come to Groton generally once a week. If needed more than that, I've come okay. more than that. Um, go to other areas such as Colchester, Pocketuck, um, things of that sort. That's great. Um, I know that you're very busy in Groton, so that's it. we're lucky to have you. Um, are the benefits from SNAP meant to be like a, a, the main source of food for a family? No, the um, okay. benefits from SNAP are supposed to be used as supplemental source of um, healthy foods. It allows families to be able to afford healthier foods 
for either themselves as an individual or their family. What kinds of things can they buy with them? They can buy anything at the store that can be brought home to be prepared. Um, are covered by SNAP, such as fresh fruits and vegetables, meats, uh, dairy products, frozen foods, things of that sort. Anything that hot foods are not covered, like a rotisserie okay. chicken or um, toiletries, things like that are not covered. Okay, so people cannot use their, their SNAP benefits to buy those types of items. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the program's eligibility guidelines? How does that work? Um, the eligibility guidelines are based on um, if people fall within 185% of the federal poverty level, then they're able to receive SNAP benefits. Um, for instance, like the gross income for a single person per month is about $1,800. Um, and for a family of two, it's $2,425. And then the guideline goes up from there based on the household size. Okay. Um, where can someone find out what those, gui what those guidelines are to even see if they should come in and make an appointment? Um, they can go on the Connecticut Department of Social Services website, also known as Connect, so it's connect.ct.gov. You can go on there, you can view the income guidelines. There's also a calculation system in there um, where you can put in your income and your expenses and things like that, and it will tell you if you're eligible for the benefits. Also, I know there's income guidelines that Groton Human Services, so if they have mm -hmm. questions, they can go in. And as long as you meet the income guidelines, then other household expenses are taken into account, such as your rent or mortgage, utility bills, child care expenses, med out of pocket medical expenses. So all of those are calculated into it as long as you meet the income guidelines. Okay. Um, when you're in Groton, are you actually having face to face contact with clients? Yes, yep, I meet privately with clients, um, individuals, families, um, whatever is most appropriate. I meet face-to-face um, -face with them, sit down. It usually takes about an hour to collect all of their information and do the application. Depending on the household size, it might take a little bit longer. Um, but yes, I do sit down and do face-to-face. And what -face. sort of verifications do they need to bring with them? Um, identity verification, so for adults, photo IDs, um, birth dates, social security numbers. For children, they do require birth certificates. Um, and then proof of income for everyone in the SNAP household. So if there's two adults working, both of their sources of income, whether it's earned income or unearned income, social security, unemployment benefits, okay. child support, all sources of income are looked at. And then also proof of their living expenses, so rent or mortgage, utility bills. Okay. And then all those other bills I had mentioned. Now, do you make the determination as to whether or not they're going to get SNAP benefits and how much? How does that work? No, I actually, I just help with the application process and I scan in all the verification documents and upload them and attach them to the application, which is submitted electronically to the State Department of Social Services. And then um, like I said, I help with the application process, so it's submitted to Department of Social Services and they make um, eligibility determination. Now, how long does a person have to wait before they know whether or not they can receive benefits? Usually it's about 30 to 45 days. Um, the online applications tend to be processed more quickly, so there is a quicker turnaround time. It could be, you know, a week to 10 days or it could be that 30 to 45 days. Um, there are some applications that are expedited for those who have no income, um, very little in the bank, things of that sort. Their applications can be processed within 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Um, I, I have to say, yeah. I'm going to jump in here again, but it yeah. really is a blessing having uh, Jennifer available at the at our office, and because uh, we do a lot of referrals for different programs, and to have somebody who is so knowledgeable and can talk to the folks that we refer over. It's really, really wonderful. So thank you, Ms. Jen. Thank you. Great. And everyone is very welcoming and everyone spreads the word about, you know, me coming. So I am very busy. But <laughs> now, <laughs> can people just walk in and see you? Usually it's by appointment, which can be scheduled through myself. Um, I work for UCFS in Norwich, so you could call UCFS. Um, and ask to speak with, speak with a SNAP outreach worker or you can call Groton Human Services and we kind of correlate my schedule. Um, 
between Marty at Grat and Human Services and myself. And then usually my schedule is pretty filled for the week. So um, we do schedule appointments. If you come in and I had a no show or a cancellation, then I will sit down and meet with someone at that time. Okay. Um, how long can a family or an individual stay on SNAP? Is there a deadline? There's really no deadline. It's, um, you know, as long as they meet the income guidelines, they can remain um, receiving the benefits. The only thing is, like, usually they have to apply yearly. Um, okay. Every year you would renew. And then within after six months, you do have to do a periodic review form, which is just verifying if anything's changed in your household or if anything is if everything has stayed the same. Now is that something that they need to do on their own or is there a reminder sent out that they have to do some kind of an update? How does yes, yep, um, when you're coming up on your six month review then the state does send out, send out the periodic review form. It's very short form. Um, a lot of times people do need assistance completing the form so they do then schedule an appointment with me, I can assist with that as well. Um, and the renewal, you okay. know, I'll help with the renewal as well. So the renewal, is it totally, a, is it like reapplying all over again? Or are they still having to bring in all that information if things have changed? If things have changed, they do have to bring in the new information. Um, it is reapplying again. Um, might be a little bit shorter process, but it's just like reapplying. And the only thing different that you, they don't need to apply, to provide when reapplying is identity verification because that's already been verified. So it's just okay. income again, housing, things of that sort. Now if things change during the year, let's say they were making so much or receiving so much and, those, and income was cut, yep. is that something they have to report immediately to the state in terms of SNAP? Yes, they okay. are supposed to report any changes within 10 days to the state. Okay. So it is, you know, crucial that you report the changes because, you know, if your income is cut, then you might receive more food benefits. So the sooner you report that change, the better. Also, if your income goes up, you're expected to report that because your benefits will be adjusted based on that. Okay. Um, do people who are receiving SNAP benefits have to use that entire amount each month? No, if there's a balance left at the end of the month, it'll roll over to the following month. Okay. So nothing goes wasted. They can continue to use the benefits. Um, now, how, how does that do? Are you handing them cash and saying, <laughs> go to the grocery store? No, they get issued a State of Connecticut gray card, and the benefits are put on the card each month. Usually it's anywhere from the first to the third of the month, okay. and benefits are issued that same day for that family every month, so whether it's the first or the third. And um, they can, once they get their card and they activate it, just like you would activate a credit card, a debit card, you can start using it. You choose a four digit pin, just like you would with a debit card, and you go to the store and you can swipe your card. So people that are standing in line at the grocery store aren't going to know that they're necessarily using SNAP benefits? No, not at all. And if, um, let's say you purchase food items and you're also purchasing toiletries, you can put them all in the same order and then when you're paying for your items, the system will automatically separate them. So you can swipe your SNAP card and just select that it's EBT, food, and it'll deduct from your food benefits. And then it will just give you a balance for your other items. Okay, that's great, it makes so, it yeah. nice and easy. Yep. And there's no stigma, stigma I would think, right? Exactly, yeah, so yeah. it makes using the benefits a lot easier for people. Okay, very good. Um, does anybody have anything else they'd like to add to today's topic of food resources in this area? No? I think you got it. Okay. Well, thank you ladies so much for, for being with us today. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to our family forum today and our topic on food resources. I hope that it was interesting and informative for everyone. Um, I'd like to let you know that if you have any further information that you need or questions, you can call the Groton Human Services Department and the number there is 860-441-6760. Thank you.